Good morning, and how are you doing today? And I got up early, and I've already been working for over an hour here in the shop, enjoying myself, and uh, have just completed both of the cylinders as far as drilling uh, these three holes and tapping the middle one. And I still need to hone just a little bit on the inside, like I showed you before, to get rid of the burrs that were caused by uh, the drilling operation there. So I got. The two cylinders really completed other than uh, the chamfers that I will put on there, or I think I will. And I have uh, off camera also made the two heads. Boy, that brass is shiny, but it won't stay that way long. I did something a little different this time, just for ornamentation. I put a little step on there. I probably should have gone a little bit deeper. But that's a rather precarious operation because it has to be chucked by the small step here, which uh, you need to pray while you're doing that so it doesn't fly out. But I used a collet, which seems to hold it. And that most of the pressure is, is this way. But that isn't much to hang on to. I also completed the two uh, connecting rod ends, got them drilled and tapped. So... All of this stuff here rep represents really quite a bit of, of time, you know, well over an hour, I suppose. Now, in uh, looking at my rough footage of this as I, uh, as I go along, and, and there's an awful lot of it, it's well over three hours, but uh, it's interesting for me to note that, wow, when I've got this blown up on the computer screen, I see a lot of imperfections. I see sometimes where the finish isn't nearly as good as what I thought. And I see a drill bit that's wobbling so bad that I, now I realize i got to throw that drill bit away. Or, or i got a bad chuck, uh, drill chuck or something like that. But it really gets magnified uh, on the screen. I've got uh, a niece that uh, lives in Chicago and her boyfriend, who's a Canadian, quite a guy, I really like him. He works in the movie industry in Chicago, you know, that toddling town. They do a lot of movie work in Chicago, believe it or not, but one of his jobs, or his job, is in the editing, uh, finishing of the movie, but he said that they uh, go through, frame by frame, digitally, removing blemishes from the beautiful stars' faces, and yes, they do have blemishes in real life, because now a little zit that she has appears on the 40-foot screen the size of a 9-inch dinner plate. So uh, that, that's how they get rid of that uh, with the uh, movie magic. But I can't do that here, and I got a little bit off topic, but uh, that's what I do. Looking at Yellow Boy, too, from this perspective, she's uh, being erected and set up. And uh, uh, as I told you yesterday, I have a little bit of offset here on, uh, on this crank pin as opposed to this. Notice this is all the way down and this is about 10 degrees off and I discussed that earlier. And the next thing I'm going to do here is to make some uh, studs to hold the, uh, the cylinders on there so that I can then make the pistons, the rods, and, and transfer the holes and possibly this thing will be uh, running by uh, tomorrow. I'm all set to put the chamfers on the cylinders, and I told you there's so many different ways of doing it, and you'll remember how I did these by using an end mill with a 45 degree angle on the end of it, but uh, I'm going to show you an alternate way of doing it in case you do not have that end mill, and you probably do not, but using a regular end mill and holding your work at 45 degrees, and of course you could tilt the head, but I told you that I would rather take a beating than tilt the head. But uh, here's the, another way of doing it, and that would be to Use uh, your combination square, 45 degrees, make sure there's no chips under there, and just set it on that, tighten the vise. And if you don't have one of these, uh, you perhaps have a, a 45 like this. That could also be used in this manner. Or I have this one from England, I think you've seen that before. That, that works quite nice for that. That's the best one of all, really. But you could even use a a little drafting 45. So let me set that up and uh, notice that I put uh, blacking on the corners where I, I want to uh, remove or I want to place the chamfer so I don't do it in the wrong spot. It's pretty easy to spoil a piece if you don't think about it or take precautions against it. 
now I'm ready to mill and this can come out because the vise is tight. I came up and uh, touched off and there's two ways you can do that and that is just to feed it in uh, after you've touched off however many thousands till you get the desired uh, chamfer of uh, approximately 3 sixteenths or whatever you want for your appearance or uh, and then t uh, remember that measurement or you can use a ruler but then you have the possibility of not getting both sides the same you can see there I've just touched off And that's fifty thousandths. Well, that's not nearly enough, is it? I'll take off another fifty. That's a total of a hundred thousandths. And the hundred thousandths gives me about three sixteenths. So I'll repeat it on the other corner and then on these two corners off camera, of course. As I'm assembling the engine now and the cylinders are finished, I made threaded rod and this time I just made uh, all thread. It's 540 all thread out of brass so there it's not a stud with a little unthreaded portion in the middle because those were kind of difficult to make so we'll see how it works with the all thread and those uh, uh, threaded uh, pivots are can't even see a thread on there hardly about an inch long and the spring that I'm using is uh, well, it's probably about 530 seconds it's not exactly what I use in the other engine, but the wire is uh, 32 thousandths. It's a little thicker and tougher than a ballpoint pen spring, but use whatever you got that seems to have enough tension to hold it, hold the cylinder tight up uh, against the frame. And uh, after I get this together, I want enough space between the two nuts there such that I can do my plumbing in a little while. So I might have to uh, cut that off just a little bit and uh, remember that that thread will be held in here with Loctite so it doesn't unscrew itself while the engine is running. So I'll go ahead and get that assembled and then I need to start on the pistons because I got, uh, remember I got the heads done and I've got uh, these little parts done but I still need the rear head, whatever we call that, I'll need two of those. And those will be done exactly like uh, it was done on the single cylinder. Alright, and I'm just about ready to quit for the day. Good morning Vietnam! It's uh, 7 o'clock, I'm wired. I've already done just a little bit of uh, work here off camera, but I made a temporary base here because of the well here so this can spin, just pine throw away. I made uh, the two ends. Now I drilled these uh, number 30 rather than reaming them an eighth. That gives me just a little bit of play here so I don't have to struggle. Would it leak here without a packing? You bet it's going to leak there a little bit but it'll be minimal and uh, something I don't worry about. Remember we don't want any tight spots, we don't want any binding. Address those issues as you go along. Everything should uh, should turn freely. There sh it should not bind. I can't emphasize that enough. Now uh, a couple other things here. If you do not want to use Loctite you can use screws here, but boy, they're going to have to be tiny screws. They're going to have to be uh, number threes because they're just very, very little room. So don't attempt that unless you're used to working on a real small uh, project. Those number three screws can be bought at Radio Shack if they're still around. I liked it when they were Allied Radio. Uh, an alternate to that 
is to make yourself where did I put it here a little uh, make your heads out of three-quarter square I just had a piece here three-quarter square brass and and use that as a head I'll find that in a second it disappeared on me that quickly okay uh, I'm going to finish up here with the pistons now I'm going to work on the pistons next and I won't show that because that also was uh, was shown earlier and the, the video is getting too long so to work I go I finally found it but that's what your head could look like just three quarter square brass perhaps uh, an eighth of an inch uh, or three sixteenths thick that could have a step on it you can turn it down and have a step on it and hold it with uh, Loctite or if you use uh, the square you have a little bit more room for screws in the corners but if you're going to use a, a square head do not put the chamfers on here just telling you about some alternatives here now I haven't talked about flywheels at all and I'm not going to say much other than what I'm saying right here and I of course always use my little uh, lead flywheels and uh, I have tons of them you know you've seen me cast these in other videos but that's what I, I use I like a spoked flywheel I like a heavy flywheel do not make your flywheel out of aluminum you need the inertia you need the momentum that's what a flywheel is all about but you can make your flywheel just about any way you want you can just have a plain disc and it ought to be about well these these flywheels are two and a half inches so if you want the proportion the same make it uh, two and a half inches but uh, you can make it out of steel dish it a little bit like this or like on the back side don't dish it at all depends on what you what you want it to look like or how much work you want to put into it or you can do this and I have a video on that showing how to lay those holes out and how to drill that if you go back into my archives here you're going to find machine shop tips of tubal cane numbers 153 through 157 that cover flywheels and drilling bolt circles laying them out by different methods and so on but you, you might have seen that but if you want to refer back to that you can and that's uh, how I made uh, this flywheel originally if you like the looks of that so that's all I'm going to say about flywheels so on with the show cylinder one is done the piston is in there I'll take it apart and show it to you but again looking at the port here notice that the piston comes up uh, right almost to it and then similarly that happens back here too but you well you can see it if I pull this back Now I'm going to make the other side exactly the same off camera but taking this off what's a tight spring it hurts my fingers pulling this out now the aluminum piston is just a quarter inch long and it's just a nice fit in here not too tight not too loose Frenchman okay uh, and the overall length here of the piston rod is approximately two and a half inches but of course you have gotta make yours to fit this is a easy slide here so that assembly is done and actually ready to lock tight into place for that matter now if you're gonna do any more polishing I would do it ahead of time but you know that's about the limit of my polishing but you you can see some vice marks or jaw marks on here from that four jaw chuck kind of inevitable unless you want to put some packing on there but that happened of course when I reamed this I'll finish the other side off camera and the next time you see it uh, everything should be in place oh uh, I guess I forgot I would have remembered but uh, I have to load 
I have to locate the ports also with that little transfer punch. Now that's going to be done exactly like I did earlier in the video, so I won't show that. But naturally these little uh, holes have to be drilled. The steam holes. All eight steam ports have been drilled, one sixteenth inch, and I'm just about ready to start some preliminary assembly work. You can see here where the ports are, and I located those as shown earlier in the film. And as far as this uh, stay here, that comes dangerously close to the uh, cylinder. And that, I'm going to put that stay in anyway, even though it really serves no purpose, because once I put the manifold in there, that's what's going to give it stability and strength. But uh, since the holes are there, and if it doesn't interfere, I'll go ahead and install it. Some assembly required. I got it temporarily put together. By the way, this will be treated to a, a walnut base. This may not be big enough. I might have to make another one. So, um... Uh, here we go. The heads uh, on both ends are not uh, held in yet with Loctite, but uh, as you can see, that's what she's going to look like. The whole width of the engine really is a little more than I would have wanted, but I needed all of this room in here for the manifold, and let me talk about that now. The manifold is uh, going to be shaped like the letter H, or is it the letter I for U of I? No, it's H. But it will be made out of quarter inch brass with uh, ports in it. And this, and there'll be a little bit of a steam inlet right here. Now I could have made this out of tubing, but it sure would be difficult to solder that all together and connect it and the way it is, this will have to be soldered in, I believe. That's the way I'm going to do it. But do you see now why I wanted that extra space here between the studs for the manifold? And the manifold is just that. It's distributing the air or the steam into both ends of both cylinders. I will saw it out of the solid brass and drill the holes. I'm going to do all of that in the milling machine, I think, because it's, it's going to be rather tedious with it small holes and I need a good fit so it'll stay in there as I solder it and hopefully not unsoldering my other joints. I've laid out the manifold on the quarter inch thick brass the letter H. So now I will rough saw it right here and this is all waste stock here and this is waste stock in here and uh, I'll, I'll rough saw it and then mill it and uh, this will all be milled out too and I'll probably end up with a radius here rather than than uh, whatever radius that the end mill produces. I'm not going to lay that out. Then it's ready to drill. The manifold is progressing nicely. It's uh, milled to fit in between the cylinders. There's the H and this cross hole here has been drilled all the way across as is this one and that will connect one side with the other and then this side is drilled almost through but connects with this cross hole and then uh, this will be the inlet 3 16 tubing and the whole kit and caboodle of course has to be soldered in there now in order to get it to fit down far enough and uh, bypass these uh, stems here I'm going to mill this waste stock out of there or it could just be sawed out either way will do these were 5 30 seconds holes and this is a 3 16 hole there's the finished manifold all milled out just rough milled I see it, it's a little thicker here than there but and live with that and uh, a 3 16 pipe that's the inlet now I gotta take the thing apart and carefully line up these holes with the uh, the steam holes so it, they're not being blocked not being missed do, do not get soldered shut it'll be about in that position 
and, uh, and I'm ready to solder it. Now I'm going to have to take care so that I do not unsolder these joints. In order to do that, I'm going to lay some uh, brass blocks in there that will act as a heat sink. And then just use my little torch. I'd like to stick some uh, toothpicks or something that uh, cannot get soldered temporarily into the holes for alignment and also to prevent the solder from clogging the holes. So I'll do that now off camera. That was a tough soldering job using this little torch which wasn't quite up to it and uh, the whole engine is hot clear back here so you know it's just drawing the heat as fast as I could put it in there and uh, I put toothpicks in there that one kind of burned off. I hope I can get it out. And I hope it doesn't leak. That Some of those little solder joints look questionable compared to what I did earlier. But it's just, it is hard to solder when you don't have everything up at the same heat. Because it's just drawing the heat out as fast as I could introduce it. But we'll see. I hope I don't have to try to re-solder it later on. But it ought to hold. There it is, the inaugural run of Yellow Boy 2. Got some little fitting to do and uh, finishing work to do, make the walnut base. A little bit of polishing and cleaning up. I don't do too much polishing, as you well know. And that's running on about five pounds of, of air right now. Five pounds. Looking pretty good. Get back to you tomorrow as I do the final work. A great deal of time has passed since I started this little project, so I hope to finish it today. Now, uh, you know, normally I just drink Mrs. Olson's coffee. You know what brand that is. But uh, Howard out of Lubbock, Texas, sent me a couple cans of this uh, gourmet coffee. You know, I don't usually get this good stuff in it. It is mighty good. Thank you, Howard. Back to the project here now. Uh, I put that stay in there and I changed the tension on the springs and it now seems to run pretty good. Well it did before too. Now most of the time it is self starting. Now watch as I turn the air on and off. I've got about five pounds of air right now. I turned it off. Well, it didn't start. Of course it did. Off camera. And so there apparently are still some dead spots. And I'm sure I could correct that by changing the timing here on the two crankshafts. All right, now I'm going to take it off the temporary base and mount it onto the uh, permanent base. I have to make the base. I have to inlet it using uh, Forstner bits so I have clearance for the flywheel. So on with that. This has been a long video and a long engine build. But the Yellow Boy 2 is done and running fine. Mounted on a walnut base. I did have to inlet it a little bit for the flywheel. but And that is the, the base. I did not have to make a new one. but it, Maybe it would have been better to have a slightly bigger base. So if you remember now, this is Yellow Boy 1, the one cylinder, Yellow Boy 2. This was a prototype that I did earlier as I prepared for this video and then here's the second one I made. I don't it is a yellow boy that I don't have a name for it, but it, and it's very similar to Yellow Boy 1. Just uh, stand by for a, a grand finale here as I run all of them. And uh, if the comp compressor uh, kicks on, why uh, you'll just have to bear with it. I'm going to use a lot of air. But I started with the patterns, as you remember, I'm using sheet brass and um, bar stock. Have uh, finally completed it. You too can do this if you have $10,000 or $20,000 worth of equipment. 
There goes the compressor again. Let me uh, build it up and I'm going to run all of them. I had uh, bought some time ago, I don't know where I got it, well, a garage sale, this manifold. And this might be for aquariums, I don't know. But it's just uh, the nuts here for, for running several of them here. And I could even run more. But they're 3 sixteenths. I'm loving that, but that's what I'm using to distribute the air. And now the grand finale. Notice the Yellow Boy 2 runs much slower because it just doesn't have the air supply it needs. The other ones are robbing it. And it does take a little more to run this. More like uh, 6 or 8 pounds, where the other ones run fine on 2, 3, 4, 5 pounds. They're all getting the same amount of air, so you can see this one runs much faster. A lot of air being consumed. I expect the compressor to kick on here presently. I hope this stimulates you to uh, wanting to work in your shop or to maybe uh, have an engine build. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making the engines and producing the video. So continue watching my videos under Tubal Cane or Mr. Pete 222. I've got 500 videos and uh, many more to come depending on how long I live. So this is Tubal Cane saying so long for now.